Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly break down Arsenal's opening day Premier League win over Fulham and break down the key tactical themes that helped them win the game and some of the issues that they encountered. So when we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Arsenal in a 3-4-3, but when they did look to push forward, they shifted into a 4-3-3 with Maitland-Niles joining the midfield, and then they had Tierney and Bellerin pushing forward from the fullback position. Whereas when we look at Fulham, they were in a 4-2-3-1, and when they dropped off deeper out of possession they were more of a 4-4-2 so first we'll look at Arsenal's shape and in that 3-4-3 how they looked to stop Fulham from breaking forward was that they had the two wide players in Willian and Aubameyang blocking off the center backs but then also ensuring that Adoy and Brian couldn't get on the ball Lacazette stepped towards Reed to ensure that he couldn't pick up the ball in deeper positions and then the issue that Arsenal would encounter is Kearney who looked to drop deeper to get on the ball but what we ended up seeing out in those wider areas was that the wingbacks in Bellerin and Maitland-Niles would push forward and then Xhaka would be tasked with Onama but Onama looked to push forward and that's where you had Tierney as a spare man in that back line looking to step towards him. So with Kearney dropping off into that deeper position there were two manners that Arsenal could have dealt with this. One was how having William blocking off the passing lane into Brian and then having El Elneny step forward to deal with Kearney. So that means that the only free man is Cavalero and what he looked to do is that he would drop off into that midfield zone and that would force Holding to step towards him. So with Holding stepping into the path of Cavalero, Arsenal are covered perfectly down that right hand side and the other manner that they could have went about it was that if they have William stepping into the path of Reem but blocking off the passing lane into Kearney. That leaves a free passing lane into the path of Brian but that's when you have Bellerin stepping into his path and then you have El Elneny and holding with the opportunity to step into the path of Cavalero. If Brian ends up playing the ball back to Reem, then William steps into his path, and that's when you have El Elneny shifting into the path of Kearney, and Holding will step to deal with Cavalero. That ultimately ensured that Fulham couldn't build attacks from the back as they looked to play through Reem and Kearney, and that was how Arsenal were successful without the ball in that opening half. Fulham looked to combat Arsenal's overall press by playing balls out into those wider areas, and they were able to find gaps on both sides. When they looked to play through the left, they would play the balls into Brian, and if Bellerin or William didn't step into his path quick enough, he was able to wrap the ball around Bellerin and holding into that left channel for Camarda looking to drop into that zone. The manner in which they were able to do that was that Cavalero would drop off deeper into that midfield zone, and that would force holding to step out, and then that creates a gap between holding and Gabriel for Kamara to shift into that area. However, whenever those balls were played into that zone, Gabriel did a very good job of ensuring that Arsenal's backline wasn't breached. We look to one example where you have Cavalero dropping off deeper and then spinning away from holding to and break down that left channel, but Gabriel came across and ensured that he can only deliver a cross towards the back post that didn't provide any danger. And when we look to one other example, what you end up seeing is that when that ball is played into that zone because holding does hesitate, once again it's Gabriel coming across to deal with Kamara and he does a very good job of forcing him backwards and then winning possession. Meanwhile when we look to the right hand side Fulham found more joy getting in beyond Aubameyang and Maitland-Niles and there was a combination between Adoy and Cabano if they weren't bypassing Arsenal's press from deeper positions. There was one example where Reed was able to split Maitland-Niles and Aubameyang for Cabano but he let the ball roll across his body and Adoy ran off Aubameyang but that's when you saw Maitland-Niles make a last ditch tackle and that Adoy cross didn't meet any of Fulham's teammates and then when we look to one other example what you end up seeing is that Adoy plays the ball out to Cabano who shifts out to the touchline line and Adoy makes an overlapping run beyond Aubameyang and that sets him free and pulls out Tierney but that cross doesn't meet anyone as well. However, when we look to Arsenal pushing forward, they ended up shifting into a 4-3-3 to combat with Fulham dropping off into two narrow banks of four. What we ended up seeing from Arsenal was that they did have Bellardine and Tierney looking to push forward, but they couldn't play through the center of the pitch due to Fulham's shape. Fulham had Onama and Kamara blocking off the passing lanes into Elneny and Xhaka, and the only way that the Arsenal midfield could get on the ball was if Xhaka or Elneny dropped off into the half spaces. So what we ended up seeing was that Elneny 
Kenny and Jaka were boxed in. So if you had Kamara or Onama looking to step into the path of Gabriel or Holding, then that would force Reed and Kearney to step forward. So when we look to Arsenal's overall base attacking shape, Bellerin was pushing forward down that right touch line to peg back Brian. And we ended up seeing William sometimes dropping off in between those two full of midfielders or dropping off just ahead of Reem to look to get on the ball. Whereas Aubameyang was shifting narrow and looking to get goal side of Adoy. And then Tierney's positioning did vary. There were times where he stayed deeper in a narrow position, but he did have the space to push forward, as did the game's key player in Maitland Niles. So what we ended up seeing down that left-hand side was that Maitland Niles was looking to push forward and he was often charging in that gap between Reed and Cabano and looking to push forward ahead of Hector to take him out of the game. So like previous games, what we ended up seeing here was that Maitland Niles did vary his positioning in that midfield zone to drag markers out of position and then have Aubameyang get into 1v1 situations with Adoy. But the other key factor here was that Maitland Niles was also making intelligent forward runs and he was taking full of markers out of position and that allowed his teammates to get into good positions if he wasn't getting into good positions. When we look to Arsenal's first goal, although it did stem from good fortune, what you end up seeing in that buildup is one, El Elneny is free and that shouldn't happen. But what you see from Maitland Niles is that he runs off Cabano and he ends up taking Hector out of the game, which leaves Aubameyang in a 1v1 situation with Adoy. When we look to around the half hour mark, it's Maitland Niles receiving the ball from Gabriel and looking to cut across Cabano. And ahead of him, what he ends up seeing is Aubameyang shifting wide to pull out Hector. And that creates a big gap between the two Fulham center backs because Reed isn't stepping forward to step into the path of Maitland Niles. Maitland Niles is able to play that ball into the gap and Lacazette lets it roll across his body to bypass Reem, but he's unable to gain possession of the ball in left half space and that kills the play. Minutes later, what we ended up seeing was Aubameyang dropping deeper to pick up the ball ahead of Cabano, and to his left, he had Tierney pushing forward to pad back Adoy, and once again, we have Maitland Niles in an advanced position to position himself ahead of Hector. So what we see from Aubameyang is that he cuts across Cabano, and with Maitland Niles dropping off deeper, those two are able to play a quick one-two with Aubameyang running off Cabano, and when Aubameyang receives the ball back, he's ahead of Reed and Hector. Now there's a huge gap for Lacazette to run across Reem. And when Aubameyang plays that ball in towards his path, Lacazette slightly runs offside and that ultimately kills a good play. And when we look to one final example, this time it's Jaka dropping off deeper to receive the ball in that left half space zone. And when he looks ahead, what he ends up seeing is this time Maitland Niles is occupying Cabano and Reed. So when he takes those two out of the game, you end up seeing Aubameyang ahead of Hector and he simply checks in and then looks to run beyond Hector to receive Jaka's dinked ball over the top. But when he receives that ball in left half space, he can only fire a tame effort at the keeper. And even when we look to the breakdown for Fulham's third goal, Arsenal are able to bypass that press, but when William dinks that ball out into the left channel for Aubameyang, he's in a 1v1 situation with Adoy, but even though there's no marker in behind him, what you end up seeing is Maitland Niles making a run into that left half space just to ensure that Aubameyang is able to cut onto his preferred foot to put Arsenal up 3-0. And when you break down that overall game, yes, Aubameyang, Lacazette, Willian, and Gabriel did play a key role, but it was Maitland Niles' movement that helped and ensure that Arsenal were able to claim all three points. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.